Hey guys, Zot here. With phase one being well underway and phase two bringing the much awaited honor system, PvP is going to take the forefront for most people. And with the abundance of PvE pre-raid bis lists out there, there just isn't any information for PvP pre-raid bis gear. So welcome to exactly that. We cover stat priority and then what pieces of gear you should look to be obtaining along with where you get them. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at Rogue, but more specifically Dagger Rogues, as for PvP, Dagger is the go-to specialisation. Right now, there are two main talent specialisations being played, Improved Sprint and Cold Blood. Improved Sprint picks up some extra hit rating from the talent Precision inside of the combat tree, as well as of course picking up Improved Sprint, perfect for when up against any class who's looking to kite you. Whilst Cold Blood doesn't pick up any hit rating from talents and requires 5% hit rating from your gear, but taking Cold Blood is going to give you a lot more damage, especially burst damage. As always, let's begin with stat priority. What is it Dagger Rogues are looking for on their gear? As often, PvP stat priorities differ greatly from those stats you aim for in PvE. Well, Dagger Rogues stat priority looks like this. First, you'll want to reach your hit cap for PvP, which is 5%. After that, it's agility and stamina, then critical strike, and finally followed by strength and attack power. Hit is extremely important, as when you reach 5%, it means you won't be able to miss special attacks on level 60 targets. So without that 5% hit cap, you could be missing that ambush that would one-shot that mage sitting down. So you can see how important this is. Luckily enough, as mentioned before, rogues are able to make up lost hit rating on gear from the talent precision located inside of the combat tree. So you can add or subtract points to make sure you reach that 5% hit cap. After you've reached your hit cap, you'll want agility and stamina. These stats are equal in terms of effectiveness. You don't want to stack either, but instead you want a balance of both. Agility is perfect for Rogue. Not only does it give you attack power, but also critical strike, armor, and even dodge chance. One agility is the equivalent to one attack power, with 29 agility giving you 1% critical strike and 2% dodge. Stamina is simple. One point of stamina equates to 10 health. The more health you have in PvP, the longer you can survive, and the higher chance you have to survive stuns. So then use your defensive cooldowns in order to turn a fight. Without a high amount of stamina, you will simply die before you are able to deal any damage. Critical Strike increases your damage by 200%, and when playing daggers, you spec into Lethality, increasing your crit damage by an extra 30%, meaning your abilities, if they crit, are going to be doing a whopping 230% increased damage, meaning any Critical Strike chance you can get is going to give you a huge added chance to deal some massive damage. Now, you might not first think strength is a rogue stat, but what strength does for a rogue is provide attack power with a one-to-one -one rate. So one strength is one attack power. What attack power does is increases the damage your melee attacks deal. And with dagger rogue focusing a lot around burst damage, the consistent damage provided by both strength and attack power leaves them bottom of our stat priority. All right, so with all of that in mind, let's take a look at the best in slot gear you can get right now for PvP. Bear in mind, this is pre-raid phase one gear. So includes all dungeons, including the newly released Dire Mall. But to remain up to date with this list, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Starting from the top, we first got Helm. For your helmet, the best you can get in phase one is going to be Eye of Rend, providing you with an unrivaled amount of critical strike some stamina and even some strength. So this helm provides insane damage and some much needed health from the stamina. It's no surprise the Eye of Rend comes from Upper Blackrock Spire, where you can fight War Chief Rend Blackhand. Jump into the fighting pit and defeat the waves of dragons and orcs sent your way. If you survive, Rend will come atop of his dragon mount Gif. At 50%, Rend will jump off and can be focused down, having about a 25% chance to drop this amazing eye patch. Moving down a slot, we've got neck piece up next. For this, you'll want to pick up the Will of the Martyr, providing you with 10 stamina and a huge amount of attack power. To get this one, it's first going to be off to Strathholm. You're going to need to clear the living side, all the way up to the final boss. Just before his room, you'll find a small room with Malor the Zelius inside. 
Kill him and in the corner you'll see a small chest. Loot this and inside will be the Medallion of Faith. After that, return to the undead side of Strathholm near the side entrance, and you'll find a chapel. Inside, an NPC named Aureus will be there. Give the medallion to him, and then you'll be required to kill the final boss of the undead side, which is of course Baron Rivendare. Kill Baron, and you'll be rewarded with the Will of the Martyr. Next on the agenda are shoulders. Now, for these, we're going to want our first piece of the infamous Shadowcraft set. Despite this set not being the best for PvE, for PvP it contains everything a dagger rogue could ever need, with a huge 22 agility whilst also having 9 stamina. The Shadowcraft shoulders drop from Strathholm once again, inside of the live inside. You will come across Cannon Master Willy. Defeat him and he has about a 20% chance at dropping these amazing shoulders. Cape is of course up next, and for this slot there is one cape that's miles ahead of the rest when it comes to PvP, and that's the Stone Skin Gargoyle Cape. This cape comes with 14 stamina, 8 agility, and also 7 strength. However, obtaining it is not going to be easy. The Stone Skin Gargoyle Cape comes once again from Strathholm, this time the Undead Side, and it drops from a gargoyle called Stone Spine at about a 40% drop rate. However, the catch being he's a rare spawn, so first you need to find a dungeon instance with him inside, then you have to be lucky enough to get the cloak, but it's 100% worth it. This cloak is amazing for PvP. Working our way down the list, our next slot is going to be chest piece. For this, we have the second part of our Shadowcraft set, which is of course the tunic, providing again a huge amount of both agility and stamina, still heavily worth it despite the moderate amount of spirit, as this is your second piece of this set, you will gain 200 armor, which can help you survive against physical damage dealers. The Shadowcraft tunic comes from the 10 man dungeon up a Blackrock Spire, off the final boss General Drakisaf. Now for braces, we're going to recommend the Braces of the Eclipse. These offer 10 agility, 9 stamina, and a giant 24 attack power, so perfectly itemized for PvP, both defensive and offensive wise. These are going to be our first item coming from the newly added Diamond instance, coming from Prince Torfaldrin, who can be reached either from Diamond West or even quicker through Diamond North. The Prince has about a 15% chance to drop these braces. Whilst another alternative are going to be the Black Mist Arm Guards, the stats alone are not too bad. They provide 13 of stamina, which is perfect, a small amount of strength and even some shadow resistance, which can come in handy when facing both either shadow priests or warlocks. But the main use of these braces is of course going to be making up any hit rating you may be missing. Black Mist Arm Guards are our third item coming from Upper Black Rock Spire. This time it's the penultimate boss, a giant core hound adequately named The Beast. Moving on, this time we're going to be using a full set, which is the Devil Sar Gloves as well as the Devil Sar Legs. The gloves provide 9 stamina, 28 attack power, and even 1% critical strike, whilst the legs also have the same amazing stats, but just in higher quantities, so 12 stamina, 46 attack power, and again 1% critical strike. Not only do these gloves provide insane stats on their own, when you complete the set, you'll gain 2% overall hit chance. This is vital, as hit chance is actually incredibly hard to come by on gear, and with all of these pieces also containing very good stats, this is the best set you can get currently. Both the Devil Star legs and gloves are easy to come by, but not cheap. They are crafted by tribal leather workers, and both require a large amount of Devil Sar leather, the most expensive and sought after leather in the game, due to an extreme amount of power held in this set. Now for Bao, what we're going to be aiming for is the Cadaverous Bao, providing us with a huge plus 12 bonus to stamina, and also providing 40 attack power. Despite the lack of agility, the insane amount of both stamina and attack power pushes the Cadaverous Bao way above any other. To get this belt for yourself, it's going to be off to Scholomance, where it can drop from any of the six mini bosses that you're required to kill in order to summon the final boss, Dark Master Gandlin. And up next, we've got Boots. Now, hands down, the best option is going to be Pads of the Dreadwolf. The only other item comparable is the Shadowcraft Boots, however, are only better if we're able to reach 4 set, which in this gear set, we don't. 
That means in comparison, one to one, the pads of the Dire Wolf are just far superior. 14 stamina and 40 attack power. A huge bonus to both your damage and also your health pool. Boots of the Dread Wolf come from the giant wolf deep inside of Lower Blackrock Spire named Halicon. Moving on swiftly, it's going to be rings next. For your first ring, it's probably best for every melee in both PvE and PvP. Of course, I'm talking about the Blackstone Ring. Stamina, attack power and hit on one ring. What more could you ask for? This ring, for its level and how easy it is to get, makes it a must have and also brings you to 4% hit rating. As you could probably have guessed from reading trade chat on your realm, this ring drops from the final boss in Muradon, named Princess. Muradon is a lower level dungeon and can easily be soloed by hunters, warlocks and even priests. So if you didn't get this whilst leveling, you can easily purchase it for a small fee from a friendly warlock in trade chat. Our second ring is Pain Weaver Band. Similar to Blackstone, this has all of your favoured stats, a decent amount of stamina, some attack power and even some critical strike. Painweaver Band drops like a few of the items in this list from the upper Blackrock Spire, this time off the final boss, General Drakisaf. Whilst a third option if you're looking for more hit rating however, is the Tarnished Elven Ring. 15 agility, 1% hit, very simple and very good for playing Cold Blood. The Tarnished Alvin Ring comes from either killing King Gorduck and looting his chest or from Dire Maul Tribute Runs. And if you've got the funds and don't need any added hit rating from rings, Mimridon's Signet is going to be your ring of choice, but only if you've got the money to throw at it, as this ring can set you back a fair bit of gold, as it's bind on equip and a world drop. Weapons are up next on the list and of course as this is a PvP best in slot list we're going to be looking at daggers. For your main hand the best of the best is going to be the much hard to come by Foul Striker. This dagger not only does insane damage but provides you with an equally as strong proc. However to obtain this dagger is going to be no easy feat as it's an extremely small drop chance of the upper Blackrock Spire boss Rend Blackhand. So if you're unable to obtain Foul Striker, the next best thing is going to be Heartseeker. Albeit expensive to craft, this dagger is perfect for your main hand. High top end, slow speed and even some added critical strike and strength. Perfect for any PvP dagger rogue. Heartseeker is made by Weaponsmiths, with its main cost coming from Arcanite Bars. Moving on, offhand daggers are next. For this, you generally want to get a fast weapon, as a fast offhand makes applying poisons a lot better. And the perfect dagger for this is Bone Scraper, coming in at a 1.4 speed and also some added attack power on top of that. To get Bone Scraper, it's going to be off to Strat Undead Side, where it can drop off the final boss, Baron Riven Dare. Before we get into trinkets, the last slot is going to be your ranged weapon. For this, we recommend picking up Satyr's Bow. This bow is perfect, plus free agility, 1% hit, and on top of that, it's a relatively fast bow. So great for pushback, and a much better alternative to its sister crossbow, the Black Crow, solely down to its speed. Now, to pick up your very own Satyr's Bow, you're going to have to venture into Dire Maul, where this bow drops off the second boss of the east side, Zevrim Thornhoof. Our last items on this list is going to be our trinket slots. Now, trinkets on Classic are a little different. There is honestly no best in slot trinkets for PvP. Instead, there is trinkets that are best for certain situations, and you should accommodate that by having a wide array of trinkets at your disposal. As these trinkets often have a very long cooldown, it's good to swap depending on what current trinket you have on cooldown or not. Some examples are Tidal Charm and Nifty Stopwatch, providing unrivaled utility, whilst being an engineer allows you to have a ton of gadgets, including Netomatic, Battle Chicken and all of the reflectors. With that in mind however, there is one trinket that's going to be good in every situation, and that's Black Hand's Breadth. This trinket provides a static 2% critical strike and is one of the best trinkets you can get in Phase 1. Alright then guys, that wraps up our pre-raid PvP best in slot list for Phase 1 for Dagger Rogues. 
Now we're going to be keeping these up to date with the phases, so make sure to check back once phase 2 hits for an updated best in slot list. And as always, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more up to date content.